The Yanks have won four titles in five years. The D-backs are four years old. Let's get to game one of the World Series. Pictures, descriptions, and accounts. Jewel sang the national anthem while the Phoenix Fire Department honored those in New York City. Barry Bonds tossed out the first pitch. 94 degrees at game time. Kurt Schilling, two earned runs in 27 postseason innings, taking the hill. And in the top of the first, Derek Jeter up. Schilling hit just one batter all season and then just grazes the wrist of Jeter, who takes first base. Take one more look. Hard to tell, but he just got him. And it would cost Schilling. Two batters later, Bernie Williams, an excuse me swing. Stares at it, thinks it's a foul ball, but the Yankees never hit foul balls in the postseason. It lands for a double. Luis Gonzalez roughs it up a bit, and Jeter scores. The Yanks up 1-0, just like that. Bottom of the first. Randy Johnson referred to Craig Council as Greg the other day. The nickname is taken off. Council's first at bat and taking Mike Messina for a ride. Council just four home runs all season. There goes his second of the postseason. We're tied at one. Council, the NLCS MVP, coming through yet again. Third inning, still tied, two down. Schilling rears back and gets David Justice. His fourth K through three, side retired. Bottom three. Two strikes to Tony Womack. We've seen a mistake here. The curveball way inside, off the belt buckle. So Womack takes first base. And here's a different kind of a belt. Gonzo, 57 homers in the season, his third of the postseason. Oh boy, into the paper. Two run shot. D backs up 3 1. Two batters later, Steve Finley at the dish. Finley the drive to right. Remember Joe Torrey benched Paul O'Neill in favor of Justice. Justice started just eight games in right all season. He mangles that one. Runners at second and third with only one out. Three batters later, it's 4-1 Diamondbacks. On an 0-2 pitch, Damian Miller scalding one down that line. Finley comes in to score. It's 5-1 D-backs on the double for Miller. Messina left after three innings. His three earned runs equals his total for his last four playoff starts. In the fourth, Schilling gets Bernie looking. And then three batters later, Alfonso Soriano waving at the outside curveball. Six Ks through four for Schill. Bottom four, 6-1 D-backs, Randy Choate on the hill. Scott Brocious can't handle the Matt Williams ground ball. Reggie Sanders scores five unearned runs allowed by the Yankees. That's the most in the World Series in 28 years. Council showing them how it's done. The man does know how to enjoy his postseason. The Yanks, no hits after the fourth inning in this one. Top seven, Schilling gets Brocious swinging. He went seven, struck out eight, allowed just three hits. The Diamondbacks, nine to one over the Yanks to take the one-zip lead. Schilling now 4-0 in the postseason with an 0-79 ERA. Very hard to win when you only score three quarters of a run per game. The last time the Yanks were held to three hits or less in a World Series game, Game three of the 63 series against the Dodgers and Don Drysdale. Fitting since the D-backs big two have been compared to Drysdale and Koufax. By the way, the big unit goes Sunday in game two. Here's one to chew on. The Yanks have lost game one five times in a playoff series since 96. Back in 1996, the Yankees came back to win the World Series after being blown out 12 to one in Atlanta in game one. This year's Yankees trying to rebound from that 9-1 loss in game one to Arizona. Ray Charles getting some love before the game after singing his version of America the Beautiful. The U.S. Soldiers bringing the red, white, and blue. Ricky Henderson throwing out the first pitch because, well, Ricky be Ricky. Randy Johnson, his World Series debut. Top one, Chuck Knobloch leading off the game. And he got him to go. Two batters later, it's Derek Jeter and Johnson gets the strikeout. Damian Miller hangs on to the foul tip. Bottom one, no score. Craig Council facing Andy Pettit. Council overmatched. Next batter, Luis Gonzalez. Pettit off to a good start as well. Top two, Bernie Williams facing Johnson. Bernie didn't like the call. Johnson gets the strikeout. Next batter is Jorge Posada. Another whiff. Bottom two, man at first, Danny Bautista against Pettit, goes the other way, into the gap, Reggie Sanders will motor around to score, break the seal on the scoring, and the Yankees down one nothing. Bautista will end up at third. Two batters later, it's Martin Grace, the infield is in to Alfonso Soriano. 
Coming home gets Bautista. The Yankees trail just one nothing. Top three. The big unit is on display and blowing cheese. Right by Soriano. Scott Brocious, former World Series MVP. Andy Pettit, the only lefty in the lineup. Johnson, seven Ks through three. Top five, same score. Man on for Shane Spencer. Johnson gets the whiff. Next batter, Soriano. Johnson, nine Ks through five. Not to be outdone after a leadoff single in the fifth. Andy Pettit facing Mark Grace. Next batter is Damian Miller. Entices him to hit into the 5-4-3 double play, and the Yankees get out of the inning. It's still 1-0 in the seventh. Luis Gonzalez on first. Nobody out. Sanders. Brocious. Soriano's throw is high. Yankees fail to turn the double play. Next batter with Sanders on first. It's Danny Bautista. Off Pettit's leg, and everybody's safe. And that brings up Matt Williams. Five career postseason home runs, including a two in the World Pettit Series. back. Now he pitches. Williams swings, and it's a high drive deep into left field, way back there. And this ball is gone, a home run! A three-run homer from Matt Williams. And the Diamondbacks have opened it up in the seventh inning. Top eight, two on, one out. Johnson in his first real jam. Kurt Schilling looking on. And Johnson gets Luis Soho to ground into the inning-ending double play. The Diamondbacks are pumped up. Three outs away from going up two zip. Two outs in the ninth, Derek Jeter to Craig Council. And Randy Johnson gets a complete game shutout. Last pitcher to do that in his World Series debut, Oral Hershiser, game two of the 1988 World Series. The Diamondbacks win this one by a count of four to nothing. Yankee hitters just six for 59 in the series. The New York Yankees attempting to make this a World Series and Peter Gammons, Dave Campbell, who among us thought that they really would kind of whimpered? Nobody, really nobody did. Well, from the Bob to the Bay, a change of venue, big time. A change of temperature, big time, by 40 to 50 degrees. Would it be a change of result for the Diamondbacks against the Yankees? An emotional and reflective night at Yankee Stadium. Emotional on many counts. The flag rescued from the World Trade Center flying above Yankee Stadium. President Bush walking out to the mound calmly, confidently, thumbs up. And what about this pitch? I mean, it was as smooth, and it's a strike. Yeah, Dale Scott called the high strike all night, so it started early for the president. And then as he posed with the managers, then we get down to baseball. Brian Anderson, not Kurt Schilling, not Randy Johnson. So with the Yankees tee off, two out of the bottom of the first. Tino Martinez caught by Steve Finley. Bottom of the second, Jorge Posada, the leadoff man. It's back, 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 back. Gone. Home run, one nothing Yankees. Well, Boomer, just as he did against the A's, down two to nothing in games. He started the walk this time against Brian Anderson, then against Darin Zito. The Rocket Man facing bases loaded in the top of the fourth. Matt Williams, a deep fly to right. O'Neill grabs it. Finley scores. We're tied at one, but Roger Clemens would pitch brilliantly. Bottom of the fourth. A long night behind the plate for Damian Miller. Candlestick-esque wins. Day. The foul popped by Spencer. Plus, remember, there's a tremendous downhill. It's almost like being in a runaway truck lane there. The next batter is Scott Brocious. Tony Womack cannot handle it, so a couple men on. Next man up, Alfonso Soriano, is a pop-up near home. And Miller, mine, mine, mine. But wait a minute. The Yankees think they've scored, but Dale Scott alertly, the home plate umpire called foul ball. Nobody touched Great call. First Scott was in position to see that Miller never touched the ball, and then he quickly made the call. I don't think most of the Diamondbacks had any idea exactly what was going on there. Soriano then retired by Anderson in a fly ball to center field to Rubio Durazo, who was hitting well. Robbed by Soriano. It is a base hit, but it would have gone into the outfield, and Womack would have scored. Instead, he saves a run, and Matt Williams liner to the left. The play of the night, Shane Spencer ends the sixth inning and gets Clemens out of the jam. So two strong defensive plays. Bottom of the six, pop up Tino Martinez. This time, Miller draws a beat on it. Mark, amazing grace, not that amazing. Well, right. the garden, that would be a foul, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it would be Charger a Charger of block. <laughs> so, new life, and with Batista and Morgan throwing, Morgan comes in. 
Scott broaches to left, and Luis Gonzalez looked like he might have had a chance to make a play on this ball with two out. Bernie Williams comes around to score 2 1 New York. In contrast to the Spencer play, Luis Gonzalez played it conservatively, and the ball dropped, broken back. And Roger Clemens, meanwhile, in the seventh inning, knowing it was his last, strikes out the side. Mayor Giuliani applaud. So an old-fashioned six-out save coming perhaps by Rivera. Council bunts the first pitch. He's out. Uh, two starts. Seattle and Arizona don't bunt on Roger Clemens, and they bunt on the guy that could be playing shortstop. Luis Gonzalez strikes out, looking to end the eighth. And then Reggie Sanders strikes out to lead the ninth. Durazo strikes out, so four strikes out and five batters. Matt Williams, long foul ball to left field. Might have tied it, but instead Jeter to Tito Martinez, and that's it. The Yankees still only have scored three runs now in the three games, but on this one, three-hit performance by Clemens and Rivera, the old-fashioned fingers slash Suter slash Gossage type save. Ruth Bilt, which has seen so many great moments and on Halloween Eve turned early November 1st, it saw yet another great moment in postseason play. Joined by Buck Showalter and Harold Reynolds, and we're just privileged to have seen one of the fine baseball games, mm. certainly of this generation. No question about that. No doubt. If you add it all up, guys, think about it. Full moon, Halloween, Yankee Stadium, dynasty in trouble, Yanks with backs against wall, literally two out, bottom nine. Bigger, literally, if lose in deep trouble to try to win four straight World Series. What could possibly happen? Ah, that's why they play the whole game. Kurt Schilling, big debate, three days rest. El Duque, big debate, how would he be? First inning, El Duque loads the bases, but against Matt Williams, Strikes him out on a high fastball. Very fortunate guy in some tough situations, bro. To work his way out of it. And then he gets Finley to pop up to Scott Brocious. So Arizona had El Duque on the ropes in the first, but couldn't do anything with it. Meanwhile, ropes. How about frozen ropes? Meanwhile, that was that was a one-two-three inning for Schilling. A walk to Luis Gonzalez. Hernandez then talks to Ed Rapuano with Matt Williams at the plate. Rapuano comes out. Yo, so what you talking out. about? Yeah, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Eddie handled that situation outstanding. Yes, he did. Meanwhile, Williams grounds to Brochus. He goes to Soriano for a force. And so nothing doing after all. Arizona with rallies in the first and third, but they couldn't convert. Bottom of the third, Shane Spencer. Hero in the field in game three. Hero at the plate in game four. Back, 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 gone. The air funnels were going out to right field. The old curl around the pole trick. Mark Gray says, I don't need to curl anything. Top of the fourth, let me send it back, 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 back. Upper deck, we're tied at one. What a moment for Gracie coming to New York in the World Series going upper tank. Top of the fifth, Womack at third, Luis Gonzalez, shallow fly to left. Spencer with the catch in game three. Here comes the speedy Womack. Here's the throw. Pasano with the tag, out. He's out at home. We'll talk about this a little later, but what a great play by Posada. Great presence. Good call by Eddie Rapiano, right on top of it. Like the calls the umpires have made in this series. They've been on top of everything. Yes, they have. So in the bottom of the sixth inning, a 1-1 game approach. is a double lead now at third, but Paul O'Neill, a little chopper. Grace to Schilling. Yankees do not take the lead. Schilling still masterful. Top of the seventh, one on, one out. After a walk to Grace, Damian Miller hit by a pitch. El Duque leaves, and Ian Rapuano had nice words, very classy finish to his outing. And then Mike Stanton comes in, gets Womack hit into a 4-6-3 double play. We're still tied at one. Bottom of the seventh, one on, none out. Finally a walk, he's human from Schilling to Tina Martinez. But O'Neill hits into a 4-6-3 double play started by Craig Council. And then David Justice with two out, swung on and missed. Nine Ks, three hits, one run Schilling through seven innings. Top of the eighth, the Rubio Durazo. Been swinging great as DH for two games. Over Bernie Williams' head. Gonzalez around third. Soriano relay, nowhere close. Two to one Diamondbacks. Good relay, relay. He's probably out. I thought the relay was inconclusive. He might have missed second base there. Matt Williams, the grounder to Derek Jeter, but no. Posada drops it. Pinch runner Midray coming score. Looks like he would have been safe anyway. I think he's safe on both ends of it. Dropped the ball and probably Cummings beat the throw. So base hit. Williams, meanwhile, Schilling out. 
surprise a lot of people, but Brian Yun Kim strikes out Spencer Brocious and Soriano. We go to the ninth after ground out by Jeter with one out Paul O'Neill base hit. Now you got to remember Kim has not thrown in nine days. Plus they had him up in the seventh, came in in the eighth. Bernie Williams strikes out, but it's Tino, Tino with two out. Back, 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 back. We're tied at three. One of the great moments. A two-run home run, two out, bottom of the ninth to tie it at three. This place went crazy. Oh, my goodness, but the Yankees weren't done. Walk Posada, single justice, but Spencer strikes out. What would we have in the tenth? We would have Mariana Rivera, one, two, three. Two outs, Yankees, none on. Derek Jeter, it's down the line. Is it long enough? Is it high enough? God! God! Mr. November, Derek Jeter, as the clock had just struck 12. Kurt Schilling, in a game he started, watch Kim give two up in the ninth, and the Yankees win in the tenth. A great World Series game, period. Yankees win it by the count of four to three. Era is continuing to be proven right. A, you're never out of it till you're out of it. B, deja vu all over again. We're going to add another one. He always said in October baseball games at Yankee Stadium, when he played left, it gets late out here early. It gets early out here late. Here we go again with game five of the World Series. The Diamondbacks and the Yankees and Don Mattingly, one of those who threw out the first ball, gives Mayor Giuliani his USA jacket pregame warm-up. Mike Musina trying to come back from a very subpar game one. K's Craig Council. Tina Martinez down the right field line, but the bounce to Reggie Sanders is perfect for him. And so O'Neill holds a third. Runners at first and third. A lot of people expecting a Yankee blowout against Batista. But Miguel Batista K's Jorge Posada and escapes the jam. You see him, meanwhile, had a strikeout working against Williams and Steve Finley. Bottom of the second, Batista against Broches. And watch Craig Council, the first of many plays on the night. He had an outstanding defensive night, Boomer. He's been there. Great first step, great anticipation. Look at the glove almost came off. He needed that extra webbing there to get that play done. What a great defensive series he's had. Damian Miller, the catcher, couldn't go with a calf injury. Rod Wonder Barajas singles to center in his first uh, World Series at bat for the first hit of the Diamondbacks, and Miller says this is great. Yeah, the teammates tell him he's the MVP for taking a night off. And then Barajas throws him out. He's having a terrific night. Throws out Soriano in the third inning, Dave, and Miller is smiling even more. Later in Derek Jeter's at bat. Miguel Batista, thought by Yankee, uh, Yankee fans to be cannon fodder as anything but. Top of the fifth, Steve Dorsal Finley leads off against Messina. Back, 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 back. God, one nothing Arizona. Then with two outs, Rod Barajas, Wonder Barajas, sends it way back. God, he's the star of the game. Two nothing Diamondbacks. Non drafted free agent, junior college out of California, Don Mitchell scouting department just took him for a wing. Grounder up the middle. Look at Craig Council, but the throw can't be scooped by Gray. Shane Spencer is on bottom fifth. He's at second now for David Justice, who has had a brutal World Series, his ninth K in the series. And then Paul O'Neill grounds the council. He tags Jeter, and he completes the double play. So the score remains 2-0. Now top of the seventh, two on for that man again, Barajas. Again swinging well. Shane Spencer coming of age in left field makes the grab. Then broaches bottom seven to right field with two on, and Batista escapes the jam. By this time, the Yankees were one for 23 with men in scoring position in the series. Womack at third with nobody out, but Mucina gets Craig Council to ground to first, one out. Just looking for a fly ball, but Luis Gonzalez strikes out. Next up, Matt Williams on the breaking ball. Pops to second. And a major, major escape from Mucina. The score remains two to nothing. Bottom eight. Chopper to second. Soriano can fly. Council makes another sizzling play. Next up, Derek Jeter gets 
Batista gets him swinging two out. Boomer, without a doubt, the, most, the least selective game I've seen the Yankees have all year. They were swinging a lot of bad pitches. But here's the Yankee magic. Womack can't catch this blooper by Bernie Williams. Runners at first and third. Batista after seven and two-thirds outstanding innings is gone. Zeke, Greg Swindell is up to face one of last night's heroes, Tito Martinez. But Tito pops the left, and the score remains two to nothing to the bottom of the ninth. Can it be? Byung Yong Kim is in again. Kurt Schilling, oh no. But Kim comes in against Navlock, second out. Bottom of the ninth, two out. Man aboard for the Yankees, and Scott Brochus is up. There it goes, down the left field line. Back, 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 back. As he did in 98, up Trevor Hoffman. God, it's gone and so's the lead. Jim says, are you kidding me? Broaches with the react on the home run after Posada opened with a double. Two out, two run home run for the second straight night off Kim. That's tied. So we go, one, two, three, ten for both. Top of the 11th, bases loaded. Oh, but Richie Sanders robbed by Soriano. And then Mark Grace to third base. Broach just makes the play. Bases loaded. Arizona doesn't score. Now bottom 12, Albi Lopez on. Soriano with a base hit. Chuck Knobloch flying around third. Sanders is throw. Short up. Safe. It's happened again. They tie it with two in the bottom of the ninth. In 12, the Yankees win it. The New York Yankees have won three one-run games in this series to go from 0-2 to up 3-2. They win 2-1, they win in 10, and they win in 12. When the cut, it's the full moon must still be out in New York. Frank Sinatra behind me singing for the 19th time. He gets residuals, I'm sure, on every one of them. Yankees 3, Diamondbacks 2. In his career coming in, top one brings up Derek Jeter. Yankees go down one, two, three in the first. Bottom one now. Tony Womack on second after a leadoff double. Danny Bautista up the middle off Andy Pettit. They are going to wave Womack, and it's one nothing Arizona. How big is that for these guys after what they went through in New York? Bottom two now, second and third. Nobody out for Arizona. Jay Bell to third. Scott Brocious looking him back. Throw to first. Routine one out. But the Yankees intentionally walk Damian Miller to load the bases for the unit. To third. Brocious this time he's coming home but his throw is offline. Pulls Jorge Posada off the plate. Johnson safe at first. No DP. Check it out. The throw to the first base side could have been an inning ending double play. Instead it's only two outs and it cost the Yankees. Next up Womack. Just three for 21 in the series coming in. Reggie Sanders and Damian Miller score. Diamondbacks up 3 0. Womack, three for six Saturday. Next up, it's Bautista, who had a huge night. To left center. They wave Johnson. 4 0 Arizona off Andy Pettit. And Bob Brenly is fired up. Fans are fired up. Look at the noise they're making in Arizona. Everybody waving pom poms. Top three now, Luis Soho hoping to get in there and hit for Pettit if Brocious can get on, but Johnson gets him for one out. So Pettit gets up and hits, and he hits all right. Single left off the unit, Soho. Got to put the back back. Two outs now. Base is loaded. Johnson gets Posada. The unit works seven, allowed two runs on six hits, struck out seven. Yankees failed to score. Bottom three, Matt Williams. Shane Spencer. Newton. Greg Colburn to third, and that's it for Pettit, who gave up six runs on seven hits in two-plus. Shortest outing in his 24 career postseason starts. Jay Watasek comes in. Reggie Sanders to left. He was four for five. Then Jay Bell goes to left. It's six-nothing Arizona. After a Miller single, Randy Johnson singles to right. Sanders scores. Watasek gave up base hits to eight of the first nine batters he faced. Now one out. Bautista singles to center. Two runs come in. Nine-nothing Arizona. Bautista three for four with five RB. Next up, Joe Torre, it's Luis Gonzalez, and the hits just keep on coming. Doubles to left. Johnson scores. He becomes the first pitcher to score twice in a World Series game since Bob Gibson in 68. Watasek tied a series record, gave up eight earned runs, and he's still going at him. Greg Colburn singles. It's 11-0. Then Matt Williams doubles to right. Williams was 3-for-5 after a 3-for-17 start in the series. 12-0 Arizona. Jay Watasek. 
Eight earned on ten hits in one and a third. By the third inning, every Diamondback starter had a hit. By the fourth, every starter had an RBI. With Tossick's ERA, 54. <laughs> Hold on to those Game 7 tickets. You're going to need them. 15 to 2. Arizona sets a new World Series record with 22 hits. The 15 runs the most ever allowed by the Yanks in a World Series game. It's New York's most lopsided loss in 293 postseason games. So Game 7 is set Sunday at Bob. Kurt Schilling starting against his baseball idol, Roger Clemens. It's the first World Series Game 7 for the Yanks since 1964. Clemens and Schilling, that should also sound familiar. Speaking of which, this marked the sixth time in history two 20-game winners met in the deciding game of a World Series. Last time, 1985, when Brett Saberhagen bested John Tudor. The home team had won every game in the World Series leading into Game 7. Mel Stottlemyre, who pitched Game 7 in 1964, warming up his pupil Roger Clemens. Kurt Schilling, the first pitcher to make three starts in World Series since Jack Morris in 1991, and he had it going with the leadoff batter Derek Jeter. Next batter is Paul O'Neill. Schilling working on three days rest again. O'Neill goes down and gets this one, sends it into the gap. He's got those 39-year-old legs working and getting greedy. Dutton stop at second. Bautista to counsel to Matt Williams, and he's out. Bottom of the first, one on, two outs, and it's Clemens facing Matt Williams. Clemens leaving a runner at second. Gets out of the inning, top of the second. Nobody on, two out, Schilling against Shane Spencer, who homered off Schilling earlier in the series. Got a lot of it, but not all of it. Finley got all of it. Still scoreless. Bottom two. Still no score. Two on, one out, Clemens against Damian Miller. Clemens, three strikeouts through two. Bottom three, still no score. Two on, two out, Clemens, Finley. Six Ks through three. Bottom four, still no score. One on, one out, Clemens against Damian Miller. Eight Ks through four. Clemens, counsel, bottom five. Little number, Clemens can't get it, but Jeter is there to clean up the mess. Top six, no score. Nobody on, one out, Schilling against Scott Rochus, the former World Series MVP. Eighth victim for Schilling through six innings. Bottom six. Runner at first, nobody out. Clemens against Danny Bautista. Bautista into the gap. That'll bring in Steve Finley. Bautista gets greedy and commits the cardinal sin, making the first out of the inning at third. A Pete Rose-like slide from 1975. one nothing Diamondbacks. Great play by Jeter on the relay to get Bautista. Top seven, one nothing D-backs. Two men aboard. Schilling against Tino Martinez in another big hit. Jeter scores were tied at one. The mayor, Rudolph Giuliani, loving it. Two batters later. Two on two out. Schilling against Spencer. Deep but playable. Finley's there and Schilling gets out of it. Bottom seven. Tied at one. One on one out. Mike Stanton facing Craig Council with Tony Womack at first. Jorge Posada gets his man at second. Huge play by Posada heading to the eighth. And guess who's warming up? The unit. Top eight, tied at one. Schilling against Alfonso Soriano. Gone. A splitter. Soriano, who beat the Mariners earlier in the postseason on a game-winning homer. Zim and Torrey love it. Still in the eight, two on Yanks. One on, two outs. Unit against Chuck Knobloch. Inning is over. Damage done. Mariano Rivera is on. Bottom of the eighth, two on Yanks, one on, two outs. Rivera gets Bautista, he struck out the side. Bottom nine, two on Yanks, one on, nobody out. Rivera against Damian Miller. The bunt, Rivera's got a chance at second, throws it into center field. Jeter gets banged up on the play, two batters later. One out, Rivera facing Tony Womack, had the big hit against the Cardinals. A bigger hit here, Midry Cummings. The former twin is coming plateward. We're tied at two and a huge hit for Tony Womack. Next batter, Craig Council. Rivera is going in tight. He plunks Council. The bases are loaded. And here's Luis Gonzalez. Here it is. Swing, line drive. Base hit, center field. The ball game is over. Bell comes in to score. And the Arizona Diamondbacks have overtaken the Yankees and have won the World Series. Paul O'Neill and maybe his last game. Derek Jeter not used to this vantage point. The Diamondbacks owner, Jerry Colangelo. 
loving it, bringing the first championship to the state of Arizona, the first pro one. Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson, co-MVPs. Last time he had multiple MVPs, 1981. Steve Yeager, Ron Say, and Pedro Guerrero. Johnson, the first pitcher to win three games in the World Series since 1968, when the former donut man, Mickey Lolich, did the honors. Schilling, seven and a third, two earned, nine Ks. Johnson pitches an inning and a third of relief, gets the win a day after getting the win as the starter. Let's go after Carl Ravitch in Arizona. Ravi. Welcome to the new city that never sleeps. Jay Bell, who has been here from the beginning, scores the first ever World Series winning run for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So instead of four in a row for the New York Yankees, it's the first in four years, fastest ever by an expansion franchise to claim a crown. Along with Buck Showalter, who helped build this program, and Peter Gammons, I'm Carl Ravitz. We'll get the thoughts of these gentlemen in just a second. Randy Johnson, folks, the first to ever win five games in a postseason. He's a co-MVP with Kurt Schilling, the two-headed monster, dominated the postseason for the Diamondbacks. Rich Eisen is with Randy Johnson. Randy, uh never pitched in the World Series before. Now you're the winner of game six and seven. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, just uh, came out after seventh inning yesterday and Bob asked me if I'd be all right to pitch an inning or two tomorrow and I said sure but I didn't think it would develop but you know Kurt you got to tip your hat off to Kurt. I mean it's a warrior mentality to go out there and do what he did and you know I mean he, he put it all on the line today and we battled back. We were down to our last couple outs and Tony Womack did it in the division series that kept us alive. He did it here tonight, too. Well, now you sign here in the desert, clearly for a moment like this. Is it as you would have dreamed? Yeah. yeah. This is it's very fitting right now that uh, everybody on this team, all the older guys on the team that haven't been to a World Series, that, to win it this way, I mean, obviously you don't want to go down to the seventh game, but like I said, if you're going to win a World Championship, you got to go to the World Championship team. That's the New York Yankees. Well, congratulations. Randy Johnson, winner of game six and seven. Back to you. Rich, thank you very much. He is the uh, fourth pitcher to win the last two games of a World Series, and you see three wins in a single series. It has been done before. Mickey Lolich, the last to do it for the Detroit Tigers, and that was back in 1968. You look at what Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling have been able to accomplish. Uh, they were responsible for nine of the 11 Arizona victories in this postseason. So, Peter, this was so, uh, as, as implausible as you said earlier to us. A World Series as we'll ever see. Four games decided by one run, and there were times we were shaking your head saying this can't be happening. I'm not going to say that it was a better World Series in 91 or 75, but it was the most, most implausible of those. Two great ninth inning rallies in New York, this incredible rally against uh, Mariano Rivera, and the sight of Randy Johnson one night after winning game six, coming out to the bullpen and then coming in to pitch. Here he comes in with not blocking it. While it was a two to one game, but there was still a runner on base. And then he stayed in for the ninth inning. Gets the first out. And then Tino, good slider away after getting Bernie Williams. And Tony Womack, pretty, pretty good play there. That was a tough play. He took a little, a little divot in there. He strikes out Posada for the series now. <laughs> It's incredible. 81 in the third innings, 50 hits, 103 strikeouts, 9-1, 1, 126 for Schilling and Johnson. But Randy, th th this ridiculous canard about him not being able to pitch under pressure, it's all over. Him coming out, it was like Hershiser in 88 against the Mets, only this is a greater stage. Schilling 4-0 with a 1-1-2 ERA this postseason. Randy 5-0 with a 1-5-2 ERA. When he was in the bullpen, you said the problem is it's going to be too late because the team might be down after they brought Kurt Schilling back in the eighth. They were down, and yet this offense seems to overcome. When you can take care of a guy like Rivera, who had 23 straight saves and beat him, that says something about your resiliency, top to bottom, including Tony Womack, at effective at-bats. Well, I'm really happy for Tony. I think anybody that knows him that knows how, how hard he plays the game. I think back to keep in mind, his ability to play shortstop is what's really set this team up. He went to right field when he first got here because of Jay Bell. Then he went from right field back to shortstop. Otherwise, this whole club doesn't shake out like, like it does to make it so effective. I, he's had a couple big hits, obviously. Here's in game five against St. Louis. Nice flare of left field. He is a lot tougher defense than people think. Tough on the bunt. You know, he can flare the ball to left field. He'll hook the ball down and in like he does here to, to Rivera. He's very quick with his top hand and bottom hand. Makes it tough on guys to, to set up a defense for him to bunt there also. Now, I remember back when we made the trade for uh, a, a expansion draft player, Jason Boyd, and a minor league player from Australia, Paul Weikert. 
really turned out pretty well for everybody. It certainly did. You look at some other offensive heroes too in this game. Mark Race comes through with three hits. Danny Batista had a huge series. He went one for three, but out of the leadoff spot, it was Womack getting on base twice via the hit. He didn't walk at all, but again, it was his game-winning hit that brought in the winning run that gave the Diamondbacks a World Series championship. He's down on the field with Gary Miller. Tony, take me through the ride of emotions, the things you've done in this postseason and in the St. Louis series, what you went through earlier this year. I know the whole season is dedicated to your father. What do you think he's doing up there right now? He's stuttering, man. He's trying to tell everybody what I did, so he's stuttering right now. But, you know, when he stutters, he's just excited and happy as I am, man. You know, I can just feel the stuttering. I can just feel that, that twinge in his throat, man, just to make everything all right. Yeah, there's a sense of calm about you in the midst of all this bedlam. What about the calm going up against a guy like Rivera who doesn't blow saves in the postseason, hasn't done it since 97? Well, man, in order to beat champions, you got to beat the best. And what other way than to go and have a challenge to beat Mario and Rivera? I mean, this guy, is, like you said, lights out. And we did, you know, we just came in and said we can do it, and we actually got it done. So, you know, we believe. When you believe, anything can happen. Okay, well, Tony Womack and the Arizona Diamondbacks champions as they celebrate tonight. Back to you. His hit was certainly as big as that, guys. Luis Gonzalez, who did drive in the ultimate winning run. 2001 walk-off hits, folks. Gonzalez gets it done for Arizona. You see where it went. And the walk-off hits are not very common in the World Series. This is the fifth series winning walk-off hit since 1960 and the first since, of course, 97 when Council scored for the Marlins. Council, interestingly enough, was on base when the winning run was scored here. I tell you what, the way this whole World Series was played out, it probably couldn't have finished in a more dramatic fashion. I mean, Tony Womack coming up with a big hit, us being down by one run in the ninth inning. Couldn't have been scripted any better for our ball club. I mean, the way our team was relentless all year, battling, fighting, tooth and nail, up two to nothing in this series, go back down three, three to two, coming over here, and then, you know, in two tough losses in games four and five. Playing the way we did yesterday, and then uh, Game Seven, the way it the way it ended, that was storybook ending for our, for our team from front to back. Well, the Diamondbacks, as you see, do it in their fourth season, surpassing the Marlins, who were able to have turned the trick in five years. Other baseball expansion franchises, it took the Mets eight seasons, the Blue Jays and Royals went into season 16 and 17. The last team with two 20-game winners to win the World Series were the 78 Yankees, Ron Guidry and Ed Figueroa. And the Yankees had been 10-0 in World Series one-run games under Joe Torre. They are now 10-1. and one. Uh, On one hand, you're... You know, you realize how close you are, but again, on the other hand, we realize how many times we snatched it away from people when they were close. So you really have to take take both sides of this thing. But I, I certainly am proud of uh, the way my ball club responded to the pressure. They did something that you know most people haven't been able to do, and that's get to mow. But uh, you know, there's absolutely no one that I know of in the history of baseball I'd rather have out there in that situation. It's no fun to be on this side of it, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty fortunate, you know, to just to get the chance four years in a row, you know, to, uh, you know, be in the World Series. Um, you know, it's the first taste of being on the other side of it. Uh, it's not nearly as fun. I was so confident that I came in this room and they were setting up and I threw everybody out. That's how confident I was. You're never confident. <laughs> There's a man who's been through it before. Entering the bottom of the ninth, this sort of sums up just how bizarre this World Series has been. Rivera had run off 23 straight saves since 1998. The Yankees had won 11 straight series. And as I mentioned, they were 10-0 in one-run games under Joe Torre. There were some questionable managerial moves. There was some shoddy play in the field. But those two guys get the rings. Back to you.